So today we're gonna to be doing this beautiful four bone prime rib roast on the rotisserie using the Evendure hub. It's just gonna be nice and simple. You know, we're starting with some great beef. This is from a local farmer here around the Toronto region, been raised with love. We've got some salt and pepper, and then we're gonna infuse it with garlic like we usually do with our prime rib. So let's get started. We're just gonna go in with a generous amount of salt seasoning. And here we're, we're using a sea salt. And this is a really thick cut of beef, so you don't have to worry about over seasoning it. It's gonna be very, very tough to over season a cut this size. Then we're gonna go in with a little pepper, getting all of the sides here. So now we've got some fresh garlic. We're just gonna cut this up into large chunks and then we're gonna use our knife to just puncture little pockets for that garlic to go into the roast. For our roast this size, we're gonna use three full heads of garlic. So we've got a bunch of cloves peeled and we're just gonna slice these into chunks about this size. Now we're gonna take our knife, just insert it into the roast like that, and then stuff the little pocket that creates with garlic. Now it's totally up to you as to how much garlic you wanna to add to the roast. We generally are making incisions here about every inch along the surface of the roast. And that's just gonna make for a really nice like you will notice the garlic as you're eating your prime rib, and that is what we're going for. And you wanna make sure you're getting the sides. This garlic is just gonna roast up beautifully on the Evander hub as the heat from the rotisserie just really caramelizes the garlic. It's gonna bring a wonderful flavor. So the last piece here, get that inserted. It's loaded up with garlic, just tons of it. So we're gonna let the salt, pepper, and garlic just infuse in here in the roast while we go fire up the Everdure hub. So we're out at the Everdure hub and it's really easy to start this. We're just gonna pull the lid off and it actually has a self-ignition system. So we'll get our rotisserie set up here. Just like that. Now we're just gonna pour some lump charcoal. So now with the charcoal over the burner in the middle, we're just gonna hit this button and the automatic electric igniter is gonna start. It should take eight to nine minutes to get this warmed up. So in the meantime, let's crack a beer. So the Everdure hub has this little flap here that opens up to a storage spot for the spit and the snap forks that hold your protein in place while it's on the rotisserie to actually store your spit, which I've always found to be a bit of a pain on most grills. So we've got the charcoal ignited. We're now just gonna spread this around and pour a little bit more charcoal over the top. So now that we've got the charcoal spread around, we're just gonna let that fully ignite. So we've got the rotisserie spit and we're only going to be using two of the four clip forks. But our first step is just get one of the clip forks on at this point. Slide it up. We'll lock that into position. And the second step, we just need to get this right in the middle of our roast. And this is a really important step because as the rotisserie is rotating, you want to make sure that you're getting a nice even cook around your your prime rib and you don't want one side to be closer to the flames than the other and so going in right in the center and keeping it straight so it comes out the center on the other side is a really important step so i think we've nailed this one so now we're going to make sure we've got this in the center of this bit so we're going to unclip this one we've got our other fork on as well and we're going to lock this into position, I think it's in the center. So now we're just gonna push our forks right into the roast. Perfect, like that. That'll be good enough to keep it in position. All right, we've got the fire started. It's nice and hot. So to load this on, I'm just gonna stick that in that end. This piece flips up here and you drop your rotisserie down in. Then all you do 
is you hit start and it rotates. So now we're gonna let this go. It's probably gonna be a four or five hour cook and we're just gonna get that rich smokiness from the charcoal over a slow roasted prime rib. So now we're just gonna baste this with a little bit of compound butter. So we've got some compound butter here left over from one of our last cooks. Just gonna put that in a cast iron pan right over top of the coals and we'll let that melt down. In the meantime, we've just taken some rosemary and tied a number of the branches together and we're gonna use this just to baste the roast with once the butter melts. Now this butter is just gonna add another rich layer of flavor because we have chives, pepper, salt, garlic in the butter and we're just basting that over top of the roast. What we're gonna do now, because we've got a temperature of about 110 on the inside of this roast, we're just gonna drop it down a prong so we start to get a real nice crust on the outside. So we're just gonna check the temp here. We've got an internal of about 120 degrees and we want to take this off when we hit about 128, 130. So what we're going to do for the last bit of this cook is just drop this down another level so we're a little bit closer to the flame to really crust up that prime rib roast. Now let's check for temp. We're looking for about 128. We gotta get the, there, 128 at the most inside part of the roast. So this is perfect. This is gonna come off. We're gonna let it rest for around a half an hour. We're gonna have some carryover. So the temperature of this will rise probably another you know, eight to 10 degrees before we actually slice into it. So this will be a perfect medium rare when we're ready to eat. Just look at that. We've got an absolute beautiful crust all the way around. All the garlic cloves, they've softened up. They've contributed another beautiful layer of flavor into this roast. So we're just gonna put this down on the cooling rack here. And we're gonna leave it on the spit with the forks in. We just wanna leave the meat as undisturbed as we can while we let the juices just redistribute here over a half hour to 45 minute rest. We're gonna then move our cooling rack onto a cookie sheet. Just so that any of the drippings don't ruin the surface. You've already see a little bit of the drippings have gone onto the picnic table here. So we're just gonna loosely tent this prime rib in foil. Perfect. Again, we'll do this for about half an hour to 45 minutes. The internal temperature is gonna to continue to rise probably another eight to 10 degrees during that time. And this is just a nice loose tenting that allow the meat to relax. It'll allow the juices to redistribute throughout the prime rib before we carve in. So we've had this lightly tented for about 45 minutes. Look at that. So it's time to get rid of the rotisserie rods and forks. Perfect, just slides out like that. So you'll see here, we've had about, what's that, seven degrees worth of, or six degrees rather, worth of carryover. So that's a good medium rare. We're at 133, 135. So now we're just gonna cut off the butcher's twine here. So to carve into the prime rib, we first need to take the actual roast off of the bones here. So we're just gonna come in like that. I'll move this out of the way. Now let's carve into this and see if we got that medium rare we were looking for. Oh, beautiful. 
We're just going to carve off slices here that are about half an inch thick. So just look at this. Incredibly juicy. We can already smell the smokiness, the garlic's coming off of this. We just can't wait to dive in here. So let's carve a little piece of the outside edge just so we can have a taste. Got a nice chunk of garlic. Got that crust on the outside. Mmm. So incredibly juicy. This is a great outcome doing that on the rotisserie. Perfect way to grill up a prime rib. So if you like this video, give us a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel because I can tell you we're going to be doing a lot more of these rotisserie videos to come. Now don't forget these bones. You can slice into those. And these make a delicious little treat. Look at that. Mmm. Just a ton of flavor. The meat next to the bone, as always, incredibly juicy, incredibly flavorful. You don't want to be wasting this.